All right, joining us today, former Tennessee volunteer, second round draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys, and uh, newly head coach of MacArthur High School in Hollywood, Florida, Mr. Kevin Burnett. Kevin, thanks for joining us today. Man, thank you guys for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, pre we appreciate you coming on, man. Um, you had a nine-year NFL career, brother. How long have you been retired again? Is it four or five years? I think this is going on six for me. Six years. Yeah. Five or six, man. I can't remember. No, no. <laughs> so, like, um, man, it goes fast, man. Yeah, straight up. Just like my co-host, Meehan, he just said, um, you just took the head coaching job at MacArthur High School. I know you're excited about it, but the current situation we're in, how are you, like, how are you able to game plan, I guess, kind of get your head coaching hat on and figure out a way to put your team in the best position possible, but we can't even be around the team? Um, well, first off, I think the uh, first thing you do is you hire or you get around great assistants, guys who know football like yourself. There you um, go. There you go. Because I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm going to help out with the offensive line a little bit. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you are, you know, offensive line coach. Um, I think the first thing is just making sure you have a, a great staff in place, great people in place to kind of help make your job easier. And then you have to have a plan. And even then, when you have a plan, you got to have a backup plan because nobody could have planned for uh, not being in school for going on two months now. And uh, how do you plan for not being around the kids? And you can't. You just have to adjust and uh, be able to move your feet quickly. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of get back to retirement a little bit. And I remember when you, act, you approached me about this, uh, about this job, uh, what, probably over a month ago, two months ago. Right. And you, you were telling me, like, look, I'm trying to get as many uh, ex-athletes that I can. What was your reasoning behind that? Because you've been dealing with retirement, and it's not an easy, it's not an easy transition for a lot of people. You know, not everyone just goes from the game and then has something else lined up and they're ready to get back into it. When you have football, you have structure, a schedule. What was your reasoning behind hiring so many guys uh, that, that formerly played? Well, one, it, it gives us something to do. I mean, when you look at it, you know, we, we're, we're big kids, so to speak, because we, once we get bored, we start tearing up stuff and spending a bunch of money and doing things <laughs> I had no business doing. I mean, that's right. just to be honest. So, um, one, it gives uh, myself, it gives the, the, the staff, it gives the support staff something else to do. And but not only that part, but then – it helps when you're building something too. So you're building something positive and giving back to kids. So um, it's the reason I did it uh, was because I saw myself in a lot of the kids and I didn't, I didn't want to see the kids make the same mistakes that I made. So why not bring in as many guys as you can that play the game that were close to the game that, got, that are going to help them in the same way that I would. So that's understandable. I like it. All right, we got the NFL draft coming up next week. You were a second round pick yourself, I'm sure, surrounded by friends and family. How do you think this year it's going to be with the whole virtual draft? Do you think it's going to have the same impact? Uh, it, I think it's. I think it's going to be an adjustment. I don't. I mean, you you kind of lose some of your flair, but when it's all, I think you can still be around family um, because let's be honest, not everybody's going to be a first round pick, so to to everybody after the first round to not be able to walk on, walk across the stage. That's one thing, but to be able to be with your family, I was home uh, with my family when I, when my name got called. And so it's, I don't think it, you can beat that. Uh, it beats the anxiety of sitting there round one go by. And then you sitting in there, you know, middle round two, like, am I going to go? I mean, that, that, that would have been the worst feeling in the world for me. Right. Right. I understand that. Um, we're we're in, we're in a different we're in a different place in the world. How are you? Uh, you are married. You have um, three or four kids. Four, yeah. Four kids. How how are you and the family adjusting to this new quarantine life? Just <laughs> you're in the house. You're in the house every day. Every day it's it's, it's home. Well, for me, I'm just gonna give you my not. Yeah, you know, I guess you could say um, just what we're doing. Ben's, our daily activities. It's called school, Ben's. food, cleaning, just. Oh, it's clean, just a revolving cycle. Clean, how, clean, how, how, how are you? How are you dealing? With it? <laughs> um, I, I think one. I mean, we we've been homeschooling for a while, and um, 
so that that's it, that's not unnatural for us. Um, but the thing now we get to spend a lot more. Like my kids have not left the house. They have not gone outside in upwards of four weeks. So it's like okay, you know, luckily for us, they can play baseball and stuff in the house, and we got with the balls and golf balls and stuff like that. So um, it they're not they don't have necessarily cabin fever. Um, but you do have to tire them out because they stay up all night. So it's like, okay, how do I tire them out, okay, um, without practice, without games, without any physical activity? And that that has been a chore. For sure. For sure. Man, you got anything else? I got a question. It's kind of personal, but hopefully you answer it. You were born on Christmas Eve. My sister was born on the 28th, and she hated getting one present. Everybody said, this is for both. Is that, you have the same problem? <laughs> they, 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 they try to jip you, but, you know, man, now, um, and this goes back to the reason why you coach, it, it kind of now to be the giver and not, you know, the recipient, I right. think now being the giver is, is, is enough for me. You know, just um, it did stink when I was younger. It was like, man, I only get one gift. I mean, however, I mean, now I'm the I, now I'm Santa Claus. So um, <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit different now, um, and it puts a little bit of a spin on it. So um, I don't mind it now, though. For sure. Yeah. Only, other thing I would say is, only other thing okay. I would say is, what is one thing you tell all the other coaches out there? You know, some some piece of advice to uh, kind of still build the camaraderie during all this is going on. Man, really just stick together, keep learning. Um, and I guess what I tell the kids every day is uh, you can't be who you are and who you want to be at the same time. You got to pick one. So um, you either want to be a great student and go to class or, you know, you want to be the student that sleeps in, doesn't wake up, doesn't do what they're supposed to do, and you're going to fail virtual class. So um, I think you have to kind of look at where you want to be and where you want to go and then follow the course. Because if you don't, now this is going to test where you want to be in life. Because now yeah. nobody's breathing down your neck. It, it's really up to you. That's what I said. You, got a, you, you have little girls? Yeah, I have, I have one little girl. So, okay. and, and, all, all right. right. Well, look, these are the last two questions we're going to leave you with. These, these questions are coming from my little ones. Uh -oh. They're going to be the toughest, the toughest. Oh, boy. Uh, hey, Chris. Oh, boy. Say hi. Hi. What's Say going hi. on? Kevin, this is, my, this, this is my little princess. She had a question for you. Uh-oh. What's up, princess? What's your question? Which is your favorite Disney princess? Favorite, um, Snow White. Snow White. Snow hey. White. Who was yours? Um, Tiana. Princess Tiana? Tiana? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're, we're done with you. And my last one. My last and final one. My big oh my goodness. Uh -oh. What's up, champ? Yeah, you see he's 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 repping, man. He's ready for the for the Jordan documentary coming out tomorrow night. And he he's repping that dolphins for you, bro. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So um say what's up. What's up? And um <laughs> what's this what's your what's your question for Kevin? What was your favorite game you played in? Favorite game? Um putting you on putting them on the spot. I think, a bit. I think Going back to Indianapolis, I played in uh, Indianapolis when I was with the Chargers on my mother's birthday. And my mom's birthday, every 10 years, it falls on Thanksgiving. So uh, it was on Thanksgiving. And I, I got player of the game. They interviewed me after the game. I had a touchdown, had an interception. Could have had two, but I let my teammate have it. So um, <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, Ain't nothing wrong with that. So, well, that's it. Appreciate you. Get out of here, boy. <laughs> nah, hey Kevin, man, look, I wanted to get you on. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I'm excited about the season. Whenever it does start, y'all know, right? <laughs> and we're we, we gonna get this thing going. Yes, indeed. Thank you, thank you so much thank for having me. I greatly appreciate it. All right, my Thanks brother. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Good luck this season, man. We out. See you later, fellas. All right, brother.